Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our webinar today. Um, the topic is creating a fully online accountancy practice. Um, I'll be the main speaker. We also will have um, Daniel Fritz from Smart Vault and Paul Dono speaking as well. Um, so we're going to take a deep dive into how you can create and run an online only practice. Um, so my name is Megan. I'm a customer success manager here within auto entry. So I'll be going through most of the webinar as well as giving a quick demonstration later on on how auto entry works as well. Um, Daniel, would you like to give a quick introduction? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Daniel Fritz. I'm the director of products over here at Smart Vault and uh, really excited for this webinar. During this, we're gonna give a little presentation about how we can really kick off the online practice with Smart Vault and make sure your documents are in that central document repository. Perfect, and um, Paul, would you like to give a quick introduction as well? Yeah, I'm Paul Donner, Director of One Accounts Online. We're a purely 100% online accounting practice. Perfect. So um, the main topics we're gonna be going through today is what is an online practice? Um, how you can switch to a digital first approach, um, reviewing the billing and costs of setting up an online practice, how you can actually then make the move from a traditional accountancy um, practice to an online one. Um, Paul's gonna then share his experiences and how he actually did this. And then you'll see a quick demonstration from myself and auto entry and Daniel for Smart, Smart Vault. And then we'll have a bit of a QA and a at the end if there are any questions. Um, but yeah, so to start off, um, it's it's hard to get accurate figures, but there are probably around 45,000 accountancy practices in the UK and around 1,800 in Ireland. 99% of these remain traditional brick and mortar style practices. Um, so they're located in a given geography and they're there to serve that local area. Um, many continue to occupy high street premises, so they might have an online presence, but like a practice in Cornwall, for example, would be very, and they'd find it very odd if um, someone in Inverness phoned through to them to, to get help. Um, so online practices are still very rare. Therefore, what we're going to be talking about in this webinar is radical and to a significant extent ill-defined. Um, there aren't really any defined processes or ways of starting an online practice. You won't find a course on this topic, for example. Um, so why? Well, an online only practice rely 100% on technology. This is still a nascent area and perhaps only a decade old. For a traditional industry like accounting, that's extremely brief. Yet with MTT and the government is indicating that online only is not just viable, but perhaps even the preferred method, at least for its part in the tax journey. Um, so we're at a turning point. We've all read about incredible breakthroughs in AI, like chatbots that can talk to us in like a human way. We're probably just a year or two away from similar chatbots being able to handle 90% of regular client servicing. Um, and this can only be done in the cloud. Um, so starting building a 100% online practice right now is perfect timing. So we'll go into more details in the next slides, um, but what is an online practice? So it's difficult to comprehend the paradigm shift we're talking about compared to a traditional practice and traditional accounting processes, um, but basically you're digital first. So 100% online and digital always. For you as a practice owner, this will be a lifelong challenge. Um, so you're always trying to find new technology um, that can optimize life for you and your clients. So there's no more leaflets through letterboxes, ads and local paperwork, papers or promoting local chambers of commerce and um, all your marketing is online as well um, new client acquisition is done online and digital perhaps via social media um, much more sophisticated it opens up a whole world of additional technology clients can be anywhere in the uk or ireland or even the world if they pay uk or irish taxes for example expat communities can be targeted um, a chance to specialize services for niche industries whose volume might not support a local business, but can easily support an inter internet business. So it's finally time to follow your passion if there's, some, if there's an area of accounting that you're really passionate about. So there are two ways you can operate an online practice. And um, the first is simply move um, your client facing touch points online, but keep a traditional accounting backend. So for example, um, your clients, email you receipts, you enter them into a spreadsheet and then calculate their return. Um, that's no good, um, it's incredibly resource intensive. 
And then second, you take the opportunity to drive incredible efficiencies by building your online practice upon technologies and creating digital journeys for your data. This is the only way to go if you're to make a profit and aim for growth. Uh, sorry, we've just had one or two questions through. I just want to make sure everyone is finding everything okay. Um, all right, people are saying they're having a problem with audio. I think it got resolved, Megan. I think we're okay to continue. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, so the next slide. So um, in a little more detail about online only practices, um, we'll go through a few bullet points here. So there's the full service online accounting practice. So you're a one-stop shop and you're selling convenience and a modern approach. Um, so the services you offer run the full gamut of do it for me. So your bookkeeping, compliance, business registration, on top of which you can add business advisory and they click you go. Um, some online only accountants offer free software as part of their subscription. So you're even removing that difficulty for clients. Um, there's a real philosophical difference here when it comes to tech. Um, so as a high street accountant, you might have suggested a client use a given piece of accounting software, um, but it was ultimately their decision and the responsibility was with them. Um, but as an online practice, you're effectively enforcing the use of a tech stack of your choosing. Um, so you can't do what you do without it. And um, this means that in the client's eyes that the tech stack and your practice blur into one. This means that you do need to take ownership of their experience using your tech stack. So you may even have to provide tech support if things don't work as the client thinks they should. Um, this has all kinds of implications for staff um, resourcing, for example. Um, next would be package based pricing. So if clients need something more like VAT accounting or payroll services when their business grows, they must add packages. Um, this helps um, make sure that they pay for what they need. So it means you're no longer doing things um, that they're not paying for. Um, next would be subscription pricing. So no longer still calculating charge out rates, no longer secretly giving clients more time than they pay for. It's fair, reasonable and transparent. Um, you know your income at all times. Yearly payment up front um, avoids issues if clients business runs into issues. Um, special offers on subscriptions, um, for example, like if they subscribe for a full year, maybe you give them like a month or so free. Um, you need to think like a subscription service, not like a service provider. Then we have anywhere, anytime. So this would be where you no longer need an office in town. You don't need an office premises at all if you don't want one. Um, your online presence is all your client sees. So they don't see behind the curtain. They don't see the back end. So the client can electri electronically submit paperwork um, in their van after purchasing. Like there's apps that can do that. They can submit their VAT return details while queuing for Costa. Um, clients have 24 seven access to all their data via their own personal client portal. Um, it enforces modern practices. So every process for you and the client is powered by technology. Um, the client must take a process based approach um, because that's how tech works. Issuing invoices, recording expenses, looking at PL data and sending ID documents securely online. All are 100% systemized um, and that's good for them. Um, automatic efficiencies from day one. This can evolve with new tech as well. Um, it completely severs what you do from how it's been done in the past. So automation and time saving are always a click away. Um, service level agreements. So clients can't expect instant responses. Unlike if they phone a traditional accountant, your SLA can say responses guaranteed within six hours, for example. And this can open up a huge capability and efficiency gains for individual staff members. And then lastly, we have team based servicing. So um, this is not mandatory and there's still much to be said for the personal touch, even if online. Some online services do focus on assigning a personal accountant to each client. Um, but use of tech means all staff can access client records. No knowledge is held in just one person's head or a requirement for a relationship. Um, the personal accountant can easily assign tasks to others. 
Um, so the client views you as an online service rather than an accountant. So as long as somebody responds to them in a useful way, they're, they're usually pretty happy, even if they're not dealing with the same person each time. Um, so the next slide is going to go through kind of how you can switch to um, digital first. Um, this is probably one of the most important slides for today. So if you are going to take anything away, I'd recommend it be this one. Um, so if you're already involved in a practice, um, and most people viewing this probably are, um, the first step is to switch to a digital first approach with your existing work and existing clients. Um, so move as many existing clients to digital first as possible before either making the switch to 100% online or starting a new practice to do so. Um, so we mentioned digital first. Let's try to explore what this might mean. So it means that all your client touch points must be moved into the cloud on, and online in some fashion. So we're not just client servicing, we're talking about marketing and promotion, um, creating client proposals and engagement letters, laying out the scope of work and seeking client agreements. You can't go into their office to sell to them, it has to be done online. Um, getting documents and data from clients like receipts and invoices and sharing important documents with them ongoing client servicing, task management, and client timeline management, um, reporting and forecasting. For example, if the client is seeking funding um, for cap or for capital expenditure considerations. Um, receiving client payments efficiently and quickly. Um, for example, possibly switching to a direct debit from clients and then offboarding clients. So those that do leave your practice must be able to do so without hassle to themselves or your processes. Um, you've also got to consider the out of the ordinary. So if a client does get hacked, clients decide to sell up, the client needs to add new directors, all must now be as digital as possible. This might just mean responding to an email and then performing some manual action, but you do need to be prepared. So let's dig down into some details now about switching to a digital first approach with your existing clients. Um, so time scale. A realistic, a realistic time scale for this is probably 12 months planning and um, perhaps six, six months if you're already very tech savvy and have a client base that's already nearly there and willing to convert to online only. So one, um, create a bespoke tech stack or tech integrations. So you almost certainly already have one of these already, but it's hard to emphasize how central this is going to be to operating purely online. Um, you've got to think that there's an app for that. Um, this is the case for most um, manual entry you do with accounting. There's usually an app that can help you automate it or bring it online. Um, if you need to create a process, its foundation will be an app because without an app, you're not thinking digital first. Um, training. So as far as clients will be concerned, you're the technology. And if they have a problem with the tech, they're going to come to you to fix it. So you need to know it inside and out. Um, so you may need to be an IT guy for some clients that have um, a bit of a struggle with, with apps or online system. Um, number two is creating scalable, repeatable processes. So from day one, any process you create must be as easy to apply to 100 clients as it is to one client. Processes must be frictionless for the client, and the only way to do that is digitally. If they have to phone you or post you something, then you failed. You must be adaptable, so your processes in tech must be ledger independent for clients who want to work with their own accounting software. Um, create a flowchart for it, so work out every step. Um, something as simple as getting a receipt from a client. How will you get that data? Will the digital journey be compliant? How will the client know you have the data? What will the client do with the physical paperwork afterwards? Number three, um, examine your pain points for you and for the clients. This is going to drive the aforementioned process creation alongside considering touch points. So what's done manually currently? What's done via in-person client visits? How can this be adapted? Don't run away from pain points, be inspired by them and look for tech solutions. There's going to be many because that's what inspires the creation of technology. So the pain point that's cliche for accountants is the big bag or box of receipts um, at tax time. How are you able to get rid of that? Um, and the answer is data automation. Um, so some pain points for clients, if they want to get hold of their accountant with a query, how is technology able to help with that? 
And if a client wants a copy of their tax return from the last three years, um, no need to email their accountant, just log into whatever client portal and pull whatever documents they need. Um, number five, so design packages to grow with your clients. So clients might join as sole traders, but they want, might want to incorporate. Um, can you do this for them? But more importantly, can you provide a digital first way for the client to do so? Um, you've got to consider the security. So the data flow needs to be compliant with data protection regulations where you operate. You may need to register with your country's data protection body. Um, for example, is email a compliant way to send and receive client data? No, then how can you create a 100% secure process? Both GDPR and AML guidelines stipulate that client data must be stored securely. That means not on your desktop or in your emails, storing them in a document management solution, such as Smart, Smart Vault with two-factor authentication ensures compliance. Um, digital communication. So consider how are you communicating with your clients? Email is going to be a big part of an online practice. So ensure you're recording and storing client communication securely. For example, using an email capture feature via your DMS to automatically store client communication securely, enabling you to delete it from your inbox. Um, number six is having the right mindset. So you're not just cynically moving your business online, you're embracing a digital first mindset. Um, this requires a daring and confident approach and you need to be ready to seize opportunities. Um, never let go of the spirit that drives you forward, it's constant evolution. Um, so change management means always being ready to adapt and prepare for different ways of working. And the nature of technology means that things are always evolving. Um, chatbots are a perfect example. So we can expect this to revolutionize client servicing in a few years by potentially providing non-human, um, yet plain English accounting querying and even actioning for accounting data. Um, so next we're gonna um, discuss um, the billing as an online accountancy practice and how it differs from the traditional charge out rates. Um, so monthly or yearly subscriptions could be the way forward. Um, if you're an online service provider, just like any other service people might like to subscribe to online, um, this makes modeling your growth pretty easy. Um, so clients can pay upfront via regular bank payments rather than in arrears. You don't have to chase payments. So let that sink in for a moment. Um, potential to bundle software or additional services as part of your subscription deal. For example, you could include accounting software and monthly or quarterly financial checkups as part of your subscription. Um, yearly is good because it brings both you and the client certainty about costs and income. So how much should you charge? Um, you can see on the right um, how some current UK online accountants approach this issue. Um, but beware, there is competition out there and you will need to look for unique selling points to distinguish what you do if you want to avoid a race to the bottom. This isn't just about offering more value. Um, it might be about offering um, your service offerings, your package composition. Perhaps you're going to become a niche in the industry. Um, level of earned trust, um, so like quoting clients, and this could be tracked online via Trustpilot or other review sites. So here's um, an eagle eye and somewhat simplified view of costs. Um, are you able to undercut traditional high street prices? So in an online practice, at least at the start, you could work from home, um, cutting costs dramatically, including business rates. Um, so even when you employ staff for your online practice, they can work from home. Um, nowadays, this is pretty normal. And for many, it's they, they prefer working from home. Um, and as a side note, with online workers, don't forget that you can recruit from the entirety of the country, not just your local area. Um, do you need public liability insurance when working from home? Probably not. So there's another cost saving. Um, your business lives, sorry, your business lives and dies via its website and social media presence. So these need a lot of continual attention and costs will be higher than traditional high street practices. And in a similar way, your spent on IT might be higher because of your digital first approach. So that could be um, your app stack, so your monthly subscriptions. Um, an online practice can be started with a simple um, laptop and home broadband. 
Um, so I'm sure you can see that running an online business can have significantly lower costs compared to running a traditional practice. So making the move to an online practice. We won't cover the hard practicalities of setting up a practice, such as getting insurance or certifications. Um, ultimately, online practices work within the same regulatory framework, so it's very similar. Um, if you already have an existing practice, um, you face a choice. You can sell up and start afresh or just adapt what you do. Um, there can be a mix of this as well. So it could be that you take some clients with you and then sell or merge your remaining client base. So you know your client list, so segment it into maybe three categories. And the ones that can, the ones that can't, and that maybe won't. Um, so the ones that can probably already are effectively online only, and they'll communicate via email, they'll already use cloud software, and they'll be tech savvy. The ones that can't might be clients who you can tutor to move to online working, but maybe don't use tech right now, or just prefer to call rather than email. Um, and the ones that won't might be clients who you just know will never embrace technology. Your choice is to either keep servicing them until natural um, attrition occurs or to merge um, and sell them onto another practice. Or you can just tell them you're moving on and then leave it to them to find a new, um, a new accountant or decide if they want to make the move with you. So um, making the move, so your day one realities. Um, so you have the full online presence. So running an online practice suits somebody who's already created a website, even as a hobby. Um, no need to know the techie details. You can hire people for that, but you do need to know what technology can do. Um, and this will be a lifelong learning experience because there's always new technology coming out. Your social media management. So your practice now lives online. It's hard to overemphasize this paradigm shift. Um, you need to be present in all online locations. Um, this means social media like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, maybe even Instagram and TikTok. Um, again, you need to monitor innovations. For example, many are saying Mastodon will replace Twitter in the coming years. Um, you need to act as a virtual bartender, so posting frequently to ensure the algorithm favors you and responding to comments. Um, paid so social um, may be necessary, so boosting your posts to ensure that more people see them or running paid adverts. Um, search engine optimization becomes vital. Can you um, boost up your search so when people search you, you're on that number one page of Google results? You have your reputation management. So again, review sites are going to be vital. Um, for example, Trustpilot, you live and die by your reviews. Encourage your clients to review you if they're happy with what you do. Um, quote the reviews on your website. Um, often these sites offer partnerships to promote your business, along with lead generation abilities. Um, so it's well worth looking into. Um, then we have recruitment. So it's tempting to DIY, but don't forget your earning potential. Why spend three or four hours creating a new page for your website when you could be earning um, and paying somebody a fraction of what it costs you to do the job for you? Um, and don't forget brand identity. This is everything in an online world, and it may require the help of a graphic designer. Um, again, this is a paradigm shift compared to a traditional high street practice. Marketing is everything in the online world. There's no other way to distinguish yourself. Your communication. So clients are gonna to need to know what's going on and more importantly, what it means for them. Remember the client touch point slide earlier. Clients need to know how your changes affect their typical touch points with you. So it could be as simple as um, instead of them calling you, they email you instead. And then you have your tech training. So with your new tech stack in place, you need to ensure people know how to use it, you, any staff you have, and your clients. It's not usually that difficult. Often these apps and services do have customer success teams who provide tutorials, but it's just the time needs to be dedicated to these tasks. Never assume that anybody is tech savvy. Not knowing how to use a software is a real barrier to entry for employees and clients. And don't forget that part of running an online practice is that you're now the tech support person for clients. They will not distinguish between the software you ask them to use and your practice. To them, it's just all one entity. If anything goes wrong, it's your fault and you're going to have to fix it. 
Um, so now we're going to go to Paul um, and he's basically going to explain how he made the change. Um, so Paul, I guess I'll hand it over to you. Yes, thank you, Megan. Um, I think uh, the way that I made the change was quite drastic um, and not everybody is going to be prepared to do what I did. Um, so basically, I, I embraced online technology when um, the online world exploded, which was about 10 years ago. Um, and I had a traditional practice that I ran, timesheet based, uh, successful practice. However, I saw an opportunity in the online world. So I merged that practice. Um, and then a year and a half later, I came out of that merged practice and I operated in a purely online world. Uh, so I started off with just 14 clients um, 10 years ago, it was December 23rd, um, 2013. And today I'm running at 270 clients and 14 staff in 10 years. Um, so, and that's purely online. Every single client of ours is online. So I didn't have to convert um, people that were not interested in coming online. I basically started afresh and, and made that decision to go completely online. But we've learned a lot of stuff on the way. Um, and it's interesting to hear some of the advice that you're giving over, Megan, which you know I wish that I'd have had when I started. One of the things that uh, I did right at the start is I thought price was where I needed to be. So I thought that actually I could package something together on a very low price, um, which basically was £67 a month because that competed with an online firm. Um, and actually that wouldn't allow me to grow. So that same package today is in excess of 299 a month. Um, so within a very short period of time, we learned that very quickly. Um, the beauties of being online is, you know, we, we take the pandemic, which, you know, is a few years ago now, the day the pandemic hit, all of our team who were working in an office, all of our team worked from home for two years and their clients were not affected whatsoever. And we grew 62% as a business. So it allowed us the flexibility. Um, we've got staff here that, um, you know, their, their home is um, not, you know, originally particularly ones in South Africa. She wants to go back home for a few weeks. Um, she's going to spend a week working in South Africa. So it gives us that that workforce to to be able to take extended time off and we and we trust them for that we don't do any timesheets this is not a firm for timesheets um, we don't monitor timesheets we monitor on t on kpis and we have strict kpis on that um, and also you know you mentioned the big bag of box of receipts i haven't seen one of those for a good number of years now um, we just wouldn't accept it um, if someone wants to do that we would give them software to be able to photograph those receipts and give them to us um, or we just charge them an absolutely ludicrous fee that they wouldn't even come near us for that <laughs> we don't we don't touch we don't touch the uh, the the paper bag job anymore we just wouldn't act for them and i think as you sort of grow your online business you start to know what your what your ideal customer is um, and we know that so therefore we would you know, we are only targeting to that. Um, we're in a fortunate position. We can now say no to people. Um, so we are targeting um, specifically on that. And I think a big area, which is also where also entry comes in, a big area that has improved and been profitable for us is bookkeeping. You know, to be able to take a picture of a receipt and then flow that all the way through or almost automatically um, has absolutely transformed our business and made it a lot more profitable than the old days in, in manual bookkeeping. Um, we just couldn't do that at all. Um, I think what is quite interesting, and, and, and pe people have said to me, you know, you mentioned chatbots. When I first started many, many years ago, the thing called a computer arrived. Um, and, you know, we went from manual trial, extended trial balance to computers, and that was going to ruin the industry. And, and we're hearing the same from chatbots, but we need to embrace it. You know, at the end of the day, it's they're gonna be there. Now's the time to start looking at it and integrate that as part of the website, et cetera. And that's something we're gonna be looking at. So I think okay. that's, that's an interesting one. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I know it it is something that auto entry integrates as well with our support team, just to take some slack off them. But when somebody needs a real person, they're there to talk to. Um, 
I suppose, Paul, one thing uh, that might be helpful for people to hear about is in the early days back when you kind of started the change, um, were there any big like challenges you kind of faced in making the change? Um, I think, uh, bear in mind at the time, not many people heard about the cloud. Um, so it was very much new. So I was kind of driving it. Um, and that was uh, that was an interesting journey. So a lot more people know about the cloud and the technology around it. The, the, the big issue for me was underpricing, definitely underpricing. And I think that because we get automation, we feel that we can probably, un, you know, go in cheap. Cheap will not allow you to grow. Um, and we learned that very quick. If anyone's visited my website, you can see the about us and it's a picture of me, you know, 10 years ago, sitting at home. I was the only one in front of a desk um, doing um, the online the online stuff, but don't don't underprice and get your processes sorted out straight away. Absolutely. Okay, and um, I know we meant we touched on it earlier in terms of um, servicing all the client touch points. What sort of approach did you take to these when you made the change? Did you just move everything to like email, or was there a specific thing you did? Emails a nightmare. Um, I think. In terms of client touch points, one thing that we hear as accountants is that my accountant's not proactive. Well, and, and that's a, a really common theme. So I think we've we've um, produced a system where we, where we have a quarterly touch point with the client um, to be proactive. So effectively, every single one of our clients um, on our growing business service, which is the one that's used the most, um, every single quarter they'll get management accounts a loom video review and the opportunity to discuss them with us so that makes us proactive then um, and i think that's a big a big area where we we've, we've had a lot of wins okay perfect um i know we've mentioned a good bit in the webinar today about how important technology is going to be when making the change so in terms of you kind of building up your tech stack um kind of where did you start and where do you think you are now do you kind of prefer one technology to do multiple things or do you use a few different softwares and apps i don't think there's a um you know at, at the start um obviously the first thing you need to do is buy a laptop um we, we use surface books but it doesn't matter they're quite expensive um, and we have big screens as well around us so you know the hardware is there um in terms of the the app stacks and the technology we've tried many over over that 10 years um we've spent a lot of money trying to learn softwares that really isn't quite up to it i do think you know not saying it just because daniel's here but you know smart vault is a, a cracking bit of software as well um particularly on a secure portal i think that's needed you know definitely needed um we use um we use a, an online online company for our practice management software um, and that manages everything within the practice which is fantastic we don't do timesheets so we're not interested in that that's quite interesting because most most online practice management companies um want to do timesheets but we don't want to pay for that part of it um we microsoft's often often forgotten um we use that very much obviously we use email etc um yeah there are um, there are main bits loom is fantastic you know it's not part of your preparing set of accounts but loom just get you know for five minutes on loom you can send that to a client you can explain all the accounts and they've got a video of everything they're doing and it's such a fantastic bit of software so there's there's lots of software out there to to learn about it i would always recommend going to the trade shows you know account takes in the excel in a month or so um and, and 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 learn as much as you can about what might be available for you Okay, perfect. So I suppose just before I move on to Daniel, where he's going to cover Smart Vault, last kind of question for you um, would be like somebody that's starting an online practice today. What kind of would what would be the big tip that you would give them? Stick to your guns. Um, I, you know, when I say stick to your guns, if you're going to be online, be purely online. Don't just sort of help your mate out down the down the pub with his bag of receipts. Do exactly what you're going to do and, and stick to that. In terms and get paid, um, all of our clients are on GoCardless, are on direct debit, um, every single one, 
every single one gets a um, gets a proposal through. They sign that, and we we never do a set of accounts that hasn't had at least six months paid up front. Um, most have paid up front by the time we get around to doing them. Um, just don't don't do anything other than you be in control of the money. Perfect. Bro, well, look, um, maybe we'll come back to you at the end during the Q&A. Um, I do think some specific questions for you have come through, so we'll come back to those later. Um, but for now, we're going to move on to Daniel. He's going to kind of go on, um, tell us a bit about Smart Vault and how it might help you guys. Yeah, absolutely. And man, what great information, Megan, that you're presenting. And Paul, you know, 10 years, congratulations on a completely, you know, remote only practice that's really stellar that's what we love to see you know as i as i jump in and think about smart vault and it applies into this and just truly building that digital service platform just want to confirm you guys can see my screen correct yep all right fantastic so just kind of talking a little bit about what smart vault is and i know paul thank you for alluding to um bits and pieces of that effectively smart vault is an online portal for your clients and what it really allows you to do is be a very big augmentation for your online presence but most importantly it's going to be that central document repository you know and Megan's talked a lot about how important compliance and things are. So we at Smart Vault are GDPR compliant. So whenever you have to save those documents, you have to save those emails and keep them. Being part of that bespoke tech stack, we are at the core of that, all of your documents. So, you know, especially when Megan, you're talking about the, the steps to move onto there you know, focusing on people, you know, hiring the web designer if you don't have that skill, hiring the IT team and, and increasing spend in social media, the same area where you can focus in and partner with people and technologies and tech stacks that are focused on that. Smart Vault is a document storage solution. That is all that we do. We don't try to be a tax app and, uh, you know, the practice management or the timesheets that, you know, Paul doesn't use anymore. But when you really think about that, it allows us to be very focused and very you know, aimed at the accounting businesses and the bookkeepers in the world. And so as I'm, I'm going to jump up and, and pull this up here. And so this is Smart Vault here. So I have a UK account. It's very uh, simplistic account here. Along that left side menu, I'm going to have some areas where I can view those files and folders. I can request some documents, which are pretty, uh, pretty easy. But most importantly, when you're online and you're starting your presence, this is going to be where you upload your clients. So on this left side, I'm just going to simply go to client management. I created a simple John Williams here. And you can add them. He's an activated client, which means he can access this. So on my website, as you're building out your website, we can custom brand, put your logo, put your colors into a login experience. That way it's not you know, different. The, your clients don't feel as though they're leaving Paul's, you know, one account in practice, they are continuing. It's an extension of your online presence, allowing you guys to really you know, push into that next realm. Now, adding a client is really simplistic. You'd simply put in that information and you would simply say, save client. I can do more actions such as invite certain engagements to them, send request docs. But most importantly, everything really comes down to the portal. And now I'm going to pull up John Williams' portal here in just a second. But before I do, I want to show you that on our side, when, from your side as the firm leader and the members and the members of your team, you can see all of their documents. You can control whether Paul can see the folder or, say, Paul, me, and Megan can see the folder. You can completely control those permissions. And when you have that level of granular control, you know what they're the experience they're going to see and when you're on the phone with them you can have those conversations so i'll point here you'll see on this right side i've got two little people on that folder versus if i jump into this correspondence folder i don't have those so my expectation as a user of smart vault is that i know that john williams in this case can see that folder so whenever he logs in and i'm going to pull up another interface here this is his experience now this is really important to note is that smart vault is very mobile enabled so whether i you know minimize this and make it much smaller 
this, that's what we call a kind of a responsive design or a phone-based interface. So when they're on their phone, they can come over here and say, hey, here's my file exchange. There's my files and folders. Hey, I need to quickly upload something. And in my phone, I can see that. So they can be on their phone and provide these documents that you're requesting right away. And it's very simplistic for them because I can go to the files exchange and say, hey, where do I need to upload documents? Well, I can upload them right here. And it's simple, drag and drop, take a picture with your phone, or just you know, click in and, and find it on their computer. It makes it so easy. It makes it the preferred way for you to get those documents from your clients. When you need a document, or vice versa, you need to provide them the documents. I know, Megan, you spoke earlier about, hey, these people need their VAT returns. They, they need certain pieces of information. Those Loom videos that Paul is alluding to that sound awesome, by the way, you could upload them right here and say, hey, you now have a new Loom video that's in your central document repository, your client portal experience. And so when they log in, they're going to be able to see those things in real time. But as we go back over into the firm world, you know, we mentioned that you can create specific folders. And one of the big pieces that we're really focusing on here is scaling. You know, Paul adding 200 customers in a very short amount of time. That's, you got to be able to scale. And part of scalability is repeatability. So when you leverage Smart Vault, all of these folders and the permissions, the fact that this upload folder that I have here is seen by John Williams in his portal. All of that is controlled on the templating side. So whenever I create a business or I create an individual or a family, those permissions are inherited. You don't have to go in and create every single folder. You simply have to create the client and let Smart Vault do the heavy lifting. We set the permissions. We invite them. We provide the portal. And what you all you need to do is make sure that these templates that you're using to create all of these folders are what you as a practice are going to want to use and that is what's really really powerful because regardless if you have people in nottingham in brighton or london you know paul mentioned someone going down to south africa and working same principle here now all of your documents are living in smart vault and whether they're down in South Africa, whether they're in Sydney, Australia, or over here in Houston, Texas, it doesn't matter. You can access Smart Vault all the same. And this provides that, like I mentioned, the GDPR compliant, secure file storage that you guys are needing to do. Now, we talked a lot about you know recording and storing pieces of uh, you know, emails and such. I'm gonna pull up my email here so apologies for my uh, work email got taking over a little bit but i sent a john williams important email here with smart vault we have a dedicated add-in into outlook and apologies here let me grab that there it is and what i can do is i can sync all the emails all the emails in a conversation or just an individual email if you need it just then. And the way that this is gonna happen is it's going to capture every email I receive from this email or in a conversation, et cetera. And I can choose my John Williams and say, hey, I'm gonna put it into that correspondence. You can rename that correspondence to emails, to you know, just client communications, whatever you want. You have that level of control. So when I say sync, this is now something that is going to automatically happen. And I got a little message on my other screen that says the mail was synced successfully. And we're going to apply this here. So if I get another email from my personal Gmail here, it will automatically sync. You have to set this up one time for every single one of your clients. And then what ends up happening is that it's going to show up inside of SmartVault. So you guys are seeing this in real time. I uploaded this just, you know, it's 8.45 in the morning here. I just uploaded it a minute ago. And note that this is a .msg. So if you have attachments that are included in there, all of those attachments are coming with this file. And of course, we can jump in and we can actually view these things. So whether I'm on my phone, I can view this history. And if someone goes out of town, say I go out of town and Megan's gonna take over my clients, she's gonna jump in and be able to see where was the last client communication? What is happening in the accounts that Daniel asked me to take over? When you're working in different areas, this is the power, this is, why the cloud and having the right tech stack using the right partners is so important 
And not to mention, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, Paul having 200 clients, you know, you could have 2,000 or 20,000 customers. Smart Vault supports over 7,000 accountants. These get what we call guest users or the clients of you guys as accountant owners. We have over 2 million people running this. That's huge. 7,000 accountants across 2 million what we call collaborators and guest users. It doesn't matter how big you get. We are deployed in AWS. We are scalable to whatever your practice needs, and we don't charge you for storage. We don't charge you on the number of guests. We are a flat monthly-based fee. When we're talking about simplicity of pricing, you, know, you start adding in all of the technologies. As Paul found out himself, he's like, hey, the 67 pound, that it's now 299 because you want to grow. And you know, Smart Vault is a significant part, portion of that that gives you that online presence, gives you that client portal. It's secure. It gives you the tools to make sure that you're meeting all the regulatory requirements that, you're, that are being placed on you. So that's that's you know, honestly, guys, as we we think about this uh, for y'all's afternoon, my morning over here, it, that's that's really what Smart Vault's all about. We are a dedicated document storage solution that can really be the core, central document repository of everything that you guys need to do. Now. That's not to say that we don't have other auxiliary products. Namely, if I needed to get this signed, you'll notice as I mouse over, I have a Git signature on here. Smart Vault is directly integrated with DocuSign. And whenever I get this signature, it sends it to DocuSign and say, Megan's my client and she signs it. It's gonna come back right here. I don't have to take any extra action. I don't have to go and download it from DocuSign and slide it into you know wherever my folders are. We have it to where it will come back exactly where it originated from. And so if you need an important document, you can create a folder for important documents and you can send that out. And the nice thing here is you'll notice my correspondence folder was not visible by John Williams. And that's okay, I can still get a signature here and not provide extra access, not create a bunch of extra work. It is going to be able to be seen, be signed by John Williams and bring it back. Other things that we uh, have available, we have form filling PDF forms. So if you can place on your website a bunch of links and say, hey, you're a new client, fill out these forms. Or you want to be a new client, a prospective client, instead of taking up your time talking to your receptionist or talking to one of your accountants for 20 minutes and realizing that this person is just a, not a fit for my firm, I can save that time by just having them fill out a form and I get a prospective client form coming across. You can get information seats, request forms, other forms, other tax forms, anything that you're looking for. You know, Paul, you mentioned a lot of those pieces about making sure that you control when you get paid. You've got to have those authorizations, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So imagine if I automate that process for you, give you a form and they fill out all of those things and then they e-sign it. All of that is taken off of you guys being on the phone, talking them through, sending them an email, reminding them about that email, constantly saying like, hey, this is the document that I need from you. We can automate that because with an innovative technology that we have with our form filler, you can have a public URL that sits on your website or gets sent out when they get invited to their portal that says, hey, fill this out. And when they fill out their specific information, for example, John Williams, then it will route to John Williams's vault in our world. So we're very excited about those things. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the question and answer. But um, selfishly for myself, I'm very excited to pass it back on to, to Megan here to see auto entry and, and see how you guys are helping these guys out. So thank you so much for letting me jump in here. And Paul, thank you for sharing all your stories. And, and Megan, I'm gonna pass it back on over to you. Perfect. There you go. Lovely, got it. Perfect. Yeah. So I am basically going to um, do a quick sort of um, kind of demo demonstration of what auto entry works. I'm mainly going to be focusing on how auto entry could really help you guys. Um, you can see my screen. Can you use auto entry showing? Yes, we can see it. Perfect. Okay, lovely. So um, first things first, auto entry is completely just online to access it you just go to the website there's no need to download anything um so you can work from anywhere from any laptop you're not stuck using one device um another thing daniel really mentioned and paul mentioned as well is scalability with auto entry you could have one auto entry account and you get unlimited um users and unlimited companies so you can have all your clients on one account 
you can then add your clients as users to their company so they're able to access their documents on their on their company really really easily we also integrate with a lot of different accounting packages so it's not just the big ones like sage quickbooks zero we do integrate with a lot of different ones um, setting up your account, we try to make it really easy. You can see all these really colorful, colorful buttons. So you add your company. Once it's added, you simply click the gear icon here, um, open up your settings and integrations is just here on the right hand side. And again, a full list of all the integrations we offer. Um, so it means that I know I mentioned the presentation earlier that you might want all your clients on one accounting software for ease. They don't have to be. So if you do have a client that's adamant on using Sage, even though you prefer zero or vice versa, um, you can just integrate with that accounting software to make it really easy. Um, I mentioned users, so you can add users to the account by going to this people section here. Um, and again, unlimited, unlimited users. So um, you can have as many as you want. Um, and again, adding them is really easy. Simply add the person's email address. You then choose the account to invite them to, and you can also then choose the company to invite them to. So if this is like your client and they're, um, they obviously, you're not gonna want John to be able to access Bill's company accounts or company documents. So you would obviously add John to his um, his company. So he only has access to the documents in that company. You can also further nail down what your users have access to by editing their permissions. So auto entry deals with a lot of different documents. It can deal with your purchase invoices, sales, supplier statements, bank statements. Last thing you want is to be telling Bill to upload his invoices and then he goes and uploads them to the bank statements folder. You're the have to go in and then amend the, the mistake that he made. So you can just give your client access to exactly what they need. If they're only using invoices with auto entry, you just give them access to that section. And it's, again, it's really easy. It's just a simple tick box. Um, in terms of then how auto entry works, I'm not going to do a full demonstration today because I want to make sure we have time for the Q&A. Um, but basically, each company has their own company dashboard. So it's as simple as clicking on the company name and your dashboard here opens up and you're able to view the documents in each folder here. So the interface is really easy to manage. Um, uploading, again, really easy to manage to upload any document. You can do it through the website by clicking the upload document button here. Um, you simply select the folder you're uploading into. Um, and then there's a few ways you can do that. So um, you can email invoices across to auto entry. Whenever you add a new client to auto entry, you add a new company, auto entry automatically generates mailboxes for your document type. So you don't have to be downloading attachments. If you receive an email from a client where they've attached their invoices to, you can forward that over or simply give your client the email. Um, mm -hmm. Give Bill his auto entry mailbox here so you can e e be emailing the invoices directly. We mentioned apps earlier on. There is an auto entry app. Um, you can download it onto your phone or again, get your client to download it onto their phone. Um, they can then be snapping pictures using the app and uploading receipts. So when your client goes into Tesco, buys some, buys some grocery shopping or buys whatever they need, if you need that receipt, as soon as they leave the shop, take out their phone, snap a picture, they upload it and it's over to you. So it means that they don't have to be keeping hard copies because everything is online in auto entry stored there. Um, we store all your documents so you don't have to worry about them disappearing. Documents you've already worked through and that you've put across to your accounting software stay in this archived folder so you can come back and view them at any time. If your Friday night reading is reading through old invoices, they're, they're there for you to access. Um, again, I'm not going to go through exactly how it works, but the, the gist of it is you auto entry pulls in your codes. So your nominal code, supplier accounts, VAT codes, it maps all those across when you integrate with the accounting software and it's a matter of just categorizing categorizing them using these drop down boxes and once you have the invoice categorized you click the, the tick here and that sends it right across to your accounting software um, the automation really does kick in because it starts to remember the codes you filled in um, so 
auto entry can be a really big time saving on cutting down that manual work with invoices as well as cutting down the storage you need like the filing cabinets because it's all going to be stored in the cloud in auto entry um, so we do offer one-to-one -one training we do specific auto entry webinars as well um, so if you want a more in-depth view of how it works do do let us know um, but um, that's where I'm going to end it with the auto entry demo there but I hope you kind of got the gist of how it all works um love that so. that's awesome so um finally we've gotten to um the q a section of the webinar um i know we only have a few minutes left so we may not get through all the questions unfortunately so i'm just going to have a look through and kind of pick out some um some ones here so Megan, can i just jump in on one yeah of course um, it's, it, it, and it's one I've heard of quite a lot, and I think this is where tradition doesn't get online. Um, there's a comment here about um, you know smaller clients decide to do their own bookkeeping themselves by passing us as a firm, hence loss in fees, as we'll get then get involved at the year end stage only. I think if you put the process in place and don't bill per hour, because you're obviously doing these people are obviously taking books in and putting it on spreadsheets or something. If you do it on a per transaction basis, use auto entry, filter feel, that into, into your accounts product, you'll actually make more money. And then when the year end comes, it will be in the format you're used to that you like. It will take less time at year end. If you're not doing timesheets, you will again make more money. So actually, that, get the flow right. That's the digital Perfect. practice. In fact, yeah, that's a really, really good point. Um, we did have some questions for Paul as well about the app stack he uses. I do think you basically mentioned that when you were kind of saying your piece because I did ask about that. But we did kind of have a question about what is your kind of most favorite software, Paul, that you use? My, my, my favorite piece of software which we use, which my daughter Jade put in place is without doubt, um, I mean, Carbon has been phenomenal i know there are some others out there people using pixie etc but that they have been phenomenal for us as a business to keep track of everything as an online practice perfect um we did have a question there so how is auto entry different or better than hubdoc i i'm a customer success manager for auto entry so i'm trying not to be biased but the, the basic thing is they're very they're very similar um hubdoc is also an automation software um, so you would probably be be good using either one. Um, to be honest, they, they do um, a lot of the same things. Um, but of course, I'm going to be biased and say you should you should use auto entry. Um, and oh, the yeah. costing, <laughs> the costing. Yeah, unfortunately, I I didn't <laughs> get around to costing. Um, auto entry is similar to Smart Vault, where um, it's kind of a flat based subscription fee, and then you pay for a certain amount of credits every month. And then you use those credits to upload documents. So again, we would go in more detail with that at the webinar or on a one-to-one -one session. But in theory, the higher your subscription, the lower your cost per credit. So it's why it's a really big benefit if you have a lot of clients on one auto entry account, because credits are shared among all your clients. So you could get a really um, high package for a lower cost. Um, we did have one. a... Uh, we've yeah, got go ahead, one over here. Sorry. Uh, you know, I had a question here that says I've got hundreds of clients in OneDrive, and you know, how how would I make that transition? So Smart Vault does offer some migration services that are going to get people over. So we have a dedicated team of onboarding team members who will help migrate those documents over from whatever document storage. That can just be files sitting on your computer. Those can be in OneDrive. They can be in any any other areas, and you can move that over into smart Bolt, and we will help facilitate that and it's a pretty quick turnaround you know you're talking about the six to 12 months uh, we can way beat that it takes us about you know 30 or 40 days to get everything into smart Bolt and ready to go that's really cool um and then paul we did have a question here i think i saw one earlier as well about what practice management software you use yeah that that is the carbon software that we that's use carbon. so you know, our practice is managed by carbon yeah Perfect. It did take well, a, we, it did take a, I mean, someone's put carbon. Yeah. It did take a, um, a while to set up. 
but okay. when we got there it was good <laughs> okay perfect so we are kind of coming to the end um so the last slide here basically auto entry and smart vault both have deals going on at the moment so if you did want to trial either piece of software um there are some qr codes there if you want to scan them with your phone um, but you can also Google both auto entry and smart vault offers and you will find the offers online. Um, so feel free we, to trial both software is out. Real quick, Megan, we also have that poll. So Alex, if you want to kick off that poll and uh, yep. anybody who's interested in learning more about smart vault and auto entry course, and then, or if you already are using smart vault, as I see a couple questions have come through that, Hey, I love smart vault. Uh, that's that's great. Check out auto entry, and you know if you're an auto entry customer, we'd love to have you at Smart Vault as well. Otherwise, hit no thank you, and we will let you guys enjoy your spring and summer months here. Anything to add there, Megan? No, I think you've you've mainly covered it. The poll is up there, so do do um answer that poll. So click yes um if you're interested in trying both out and we will get back to you with kind of the links to both of the software so you'll have the links there to trial them both out and um, if you already use either software you can obviously ignore it um but otherwise just want to thank you guys for your time and showing up today we hope you found the information helpful um and thanks daniel and paul for your time today as well you're thank welcome. you megan thank you paul and thank you to everybody that joined Perfect. So I guess we'll leave it there, you guys, um, and enjoy the rest of your afternoon or the rest of your day, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Y'all have been super fun.